Hi, this is Rick Dangerous, and welcome to this showcase video for Retro Power Final Edition. In this video, I'm going to talk about pretty much everything that's on the build. Not every game, but all, all the different systems and sort of what's gone into putting this together the last four plus years. So, <clears throat> first thing I'll do is, is just mention the theme. So this theme is Epic Noia, and it was designed uh, by Chiquello in collaboration with Neil and what I've personally done is just taken that theme and changed all the posters you see in the background so all the artwork so if you've got like the Street Fighter uh, you've got um, uh, Road Rash you know like also everything like that I've matched artworks to the um, games that are on the build so you've got Gremlins there there's Gremlins in there You've got Batman, you've got Alien vs Predator, and I've just had fun with it, just blending them all in um, and having a big full HD uh, look to the theme. And I've also added loads of collections and my own controller icons, like on this one. These are all my own icons on the bottom left. Um, but yeah, that's just that's the theme. That's that's probably taken me a good <laughs> months to get all that, and I'm still working on that to get that how I've got it. Um, but then I want to talk about the actual systems and basically the content. So we start off Arcade. I have Arcade showing first. That's controlled by the essystems.config file, which you basically put in order of the systems you want to display first. I think lots of people love Arcade. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of my main go-to for Arcade. It's the first platform when, when the system loads up, but you can change that. Um, Arcade is basically made up of around about 900 plus Final Burn Neo games because they run so well on the Raspberry Pi 4, and their control mapping is fantastic. So the I know they they the Final Burn Neo uh, they make sure they match how the arcade control system was to their games. Um, for their emulator. So that's arcade is mostly made up of Final Burn Neo. The rest is main 2003 plus, which is 0 0.78 plus, or 2010, which is main 0 0.139. Um, so that yeah, that's that's the arcade setup. Every game um, has a box art throughout the whole system. So where you see this picture, when I go like this, I go change systems. All these pictures are called box arts. So every game is going to have a box art. Um, every game is going to have a description. So they've got the, the, the goal is to shoot down enemy airplanes. So there's a description. Every game is going to have a genre tag. So shoot them up. Uh, every game is going to have a publisher and developer. I spent a good few months making sure every game had a developer and publisher. Every game will have a play account and a released year. Now that seems like oh, you know, you, you surely that just gets pulled through screen scraper or launch box data databases, etc. Well, no, because there's there's so many what don't have it. Out of around sixteen thousand plus games, I've added possibly around about four to five thousand of my of of developer tags and publisher tags. Um, maybe even more than that, uh, and player counts is similar. Especially for systems like um, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad, um, Hacks, Homebrew, all that sort of stuff. Most of that I've actually manually added the information into the game list, like the whole lot, like the the, the whole tags, every, everything. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done for some systems. Systems like Arcade is straightforward. Arcade is mostly all available on Screens Screenscraper database. The 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 main thing of Arcade to get right is using non-merged um, or building a ROM set correctly or, you, or just using a non-merged to ensure that the games launch um, and matching the ver matching the, the ROM set so if you're going to use Final Burn Neo as your emulator you need to you know, make sure you use the latest versions of Final Burn Neo to match the emulator revisions same with main if you're using if you're going to launch with main 2003 plus make sure you're using the same uh, ROM set so that's that's the main thing about arcade. Uh, moving on, so we've got this one, Daffin. So what I've done here 
Yeah, I've got loads of games what I've not I've not, never seen available um, with artwork. They're available. You people can grab them, but I've added loads of custom arts, um, and yeah, that, they work great. Uh, Sega Naomi, that's all built on Flycast, uh, all using Flycast, so that runs really well. So with Sega Naomi, you have uh, games like, there's quite a few of them, like Monkey Ball, um, you would need a separate CHD file in a folder. So what you do with that, you, you grab the Monkey Ball zip, you grab the CHD file, you name the folder as the same as the um, game, and then you put the CHD into the folder, and it, within your uh, ROMs Naomi folder, and then you you can launch your Naomi games like that. Not all games need them. Uh, there's databases for all that stuff. So Amiga CD32. So on this latest one, I've got all M3U files. So uh, there's no untidy ROM folder. It's just basically all playlist M3 M3U files pointing to the uh, BingQ, ISO, whatever it would be. Um, so yeah, that's how I've done the Mega CD32. Uh, there's 94 Mega CD32 games. This whole build is a top-rated build. Everything on this build, apart from some underrated gems, which is not low, not many. Everything on this build has I've spent years researching, reading magazines, retro gamer magazines since I was a kid, building lists um, and ensuring that all the games have at least one to two very popular magazines with a rating of seven plus. So that's, that sort of stuff takes a long, long time um, to, to compile. And especially when I've got around about, I think, I don't know, I can't even remember how many systems, it's, it's a minimum of 60. Um, it's, gone, it's gone way above that now. Um, so yeah, so these, all these CD32 games have, uh, either extra levels um, which the non-CD games didn't have or they have enhanced audio in this uh, enhanced CD audio and I've been really I've been gone through with every system I've gone through their the systems forums to see like experts who just like like the Amiga forum there's so many people who love you know playing Amiga from back in the day so they have their top picks and so I've, I've gone through every little every detail made I've created so many databases comparing reviews um, when I'm when I'm picking out games Atari 2600 uh, 5200 7800 I mean there's not much to say about these but uh, I think let's, let's have a look oh I've enabled Interbrain Flint uh, blending on some of the games because there was some issue uh, with a few of them like Frogger on the latest version of Stella and Batasira that's not an issue um, let's have a look what else we got Atari Lynx Atari Jaguar so I've made special configs for games like Doom to make them work better um, by default they're not running really well so just it's just a case of going into the emulators and changing configs I've moved all the controller icons at the bottom to, over shifted them to the left to match my theme style. I've created loads of my own text underneath where it says games available. There was there was lots anyway, but I've uh, revamped them and created my own. Also the main text like TGCD, um, stuff like that, Topographic CD, I've edited and created my own uh, stuff from that. Uh, what else we got? Nintendo NES, Nintendo Homebrew. So yeah, most of this I would have I would have got box arts, a box art template, and added wallpaper or whatever was available. If there was an if there was if there was game art available, um, uh, you know, if, if there was a, already a box art available, I would have it. Otherwise, I just created my own. There's many games I've created my own, um, but I always look at the developer uh, publisher's site first, developer site to see if there's anything available. Um, Nintendo hacks the same so again you're gonna have all the same quality of the hacks you got uh, where, where you got the released year you got the developer the publisher the genre and then the game titles that's taken absolutely months getting all the game titles so when you when you add a game 
um, from Screen Scraper or wherever it is. Usually the title's okay, but there's also loads of games you won't have a very, a very nice title. Um, so I've made sure the titles are all really nice and correct and tidy and and on game order. Something I've not managed to figure out on Battersea yet very well. Um, but I've got like the the t so you make sure in like the f I don't know it could be Robocop one, then Robocop two, Robocop three. So the sequence is all correct. And if you look on this one, I noticed someone on Discord on my server uh, and posted about how to change. Uh, disk on this particular system so this one I've actually put it in the information here press RB to eject side A press LB to select side B etc etc now all this information is in RetroPie docs um, the RetroPie documents online are absolutely fantastic I study 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 them um, because all the, yeah it's all there um, I mean it's say it's all there it's all there for systems what are um, compatible Systems I've added what don't come with RetroPie. The information for that you need to look further. But to be honest, I got almost all the information from the RetroPie forum. Um, so yeah. Okay, so then Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo hacks. We can have a look in here. I've created loads of these artworks. Some were available online. If they're available online, I just take taking them. Um, And if not, I, I I put it together myself. Uh, so Super Famicom, which is the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo, same with Famicom, the Japanese version of Nintendo, the Nintendo Entertainment System. These ones have a like CD quality sound, same with the Mega Drive, uh, MD Plus, Super Game Boy, which basically allowed you to take some Game Boy games and put them in. Um, like an adapter and into your Super Nintendo to play them on a big TV runs what are compatible uh, Virtual Boy Nintendo 64 Nintendo 64 um, if you've got like a Wii U Pro PS4 one of these really popular controllers you shouldn't have any issues running all the games and your controller should just work if you have, so there are certain joysticks like the I think a few versions of the 8-bit do um, are not out of the box working on uh, the one that the emulators what are non retro. So, like the Glide 64 uh, standalone version, um, you might have to do some configurations on them or just use a PS4 or Wii U Pro or one of these popular controllers or switch the emulator over from a non lib retro which is a re which is retro arch the controllers are based in the retro arch to us to a uh to one more yeah working on retro arch hope that makes sense uh game boy game boy advance nintendo ds Philips cdi so there's just so many systems this is the mega drive with the enhanced sound sega cd Sega Saturn is a mixed bag. This is mostly running on uh, Yabba Sanshiro, the Libretro version. Since um, working more on the build, I've discovered that overall the standalone version works so much better than the Libretro version. Um, there's a few graphical glitches, what can be really annoying in some games on the Libretro version. So, possibly, I would switch almost all out eventually for. Um, the non libretro version of Yabba San Shiro. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone just switching them all because there are a few games, believe it or not, what don't work um, on the standalone version but work on the libretro version. So I would just ha have it how it is now, but if there's any game you feel like, oh, that's a bit not how I want it, then it can be switched. But I've spent literally I spent every game I've I've over sixteen thousand games I've personally opened up and played over four years. Some of them just for ten seconds, like literally just make sure the controls work, make sure that you can move in the game. Um, some yeah, but some of them I've gone more depending on what tested testing was needed. Like for instance, there was a time where Scum VM was having issues with it, so and, and an issue could come after five minutes. So myself and a few others. I tested every game for over five minutes, um, just to just to make sure it's working. It's what you do if you want something stable, 
and we want, you, you don't want something that just looks fancy and you want to make sure you've got a system you can play and the games will actually launch especially when you're showing your family um, uh, you don't, you don't, last thing you want is something that doesn't work so that's uh, Saturn Dreamcast, this is uh, predominantly on running ReDream uh, ReDream is an amazing emulator uh, again you might want to set your controls once you do it, it's so easy you just bring up the menu, map your controls done some some people won't even have to do that uh, depending on your controller uh, once you've done it for one game it's set for all games it's, it's a it's you know one minute job uh, Dreamcast Neo Geo Neo Geo CD PlayStation PlayStation Portable this is working really well uh, some games up two times some up standard resolution on a PI5 with Batasira, I'm managing to get three times on most games, and some of them even three times with the frame rate. So with, yeah, with the with the frame skip off, depending on the game. Uh, but I've not had, I've not found any game yet where I couldn't get at least two times out on the uh, PI5. This one, most of them are running at two times. Uh, just there's some what just will not run like that on on, on two times. And there's a few games that won't run at all, even on one times. Uh, but yeah, most of them run. Anything that doesn't run, I don't include. Uh, PSP Minis, Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan Color, uh, Amiga. So this is built uh, using. I've switched over recently to the latest uh, PUAE 2021. Uh, reason being is this is more optimized for lower end hardware. And I just find it just feels a bit more updated. Lots of the configurations are really good. Uh, there were games what um, I never could get running, only just a very small handful, and had to switch over to a different emulator. Now they all run on this this emulator. So very happy with Amiga. I love Amiga. It's played many hours back in the day. So yeah, that's all good. Uh, Amstrad. Amstrad, I've uh, created all the necessary files. If so, if the game didn't just auto boot, which most games do. I created an M3U file with the command in to put like the cat command of what you need to boot the game. Um, There's only a few I had to do that, uh, but I've done that. Same with the latest Bat Serial, I've had to do things like that as well. Uh, Atari 800, Atari ST, BBC Micro, Commodore 64. All the games on here, if it used port 1, I've mapped port 1. If it used port 2, I map port 2. What this is, is uh, there were lots of Commodore 64 games where only had where you had to plug your joystick in port 2 or you had to plug your joystick in port 1 so uh, you can actually do this through the emulator you can like when you're playing the game you can you can have like a hotkey set so you can just switch your controller port but I've basically saved the configuration for each game what needs the correct map controller uh, same with Commodore 60, Commodore 16 Plus 4. I've done the same for this. This is a system I added recently. Um, MS DOS, all the auto launch files are created um, for this one. Scum VM overall is working better uh, for me on the Raspberry Pi 4 on Retro, Retro Pi. These look personally find these work fantastic I'm having these are all running on the standalone the libretro emulator from all the testing we've ever done has always been a little bit hit and miss um, so that's what I'm running now the standalone on Batasira but I'm finding there's some issues on the Batasira version which I've been on the github and I've seen other people have the same issues I've been and nothing's been answered so uh, not that happy with it on Batasira, but I still there's so many good features on Batasira. I love that. Uh, yeah, the pros outweigh the cons. Uh, Tick80, Sharp, ZX81, ZX Spectrum. Uh, ZX Spectrum was this that little picture there of the 48K with the rubber keys. So iconic. So, such a brilliant computer system. My first computer system. Uh, Atari 2600 was my first console, but this was my first computer system. Uh, it, it, the year it was released in the UK, it says there, uh, 82, I mean, yeah, I, I, I remember from the age of maybe five or something we had this, 
um, I had this open bore pick a eight Cody options then they have all the collections so these collections will have every single game what is on this build is in these collections and this works through the update tool so it has where Batasiri doesn't need that it has its own dynamic collection option needs a bit of setting up but it, it, you can do it so I will show on here with the update tool if we go into here and the update tool so let's say I add more games in the future now you must stick to your um, matching the genre tags all the, all the collections you saw there action action adventure beat them up etc they must stay the same when you add a game otherwise they won't get added uh, they, the game will get added but they, they won't get added to the collections so what you would do is you go into um, system tools game lists genre utilities and realign and that will make sure every game is added automatically I think that's a wonderful feature okay there's loads of wonderful features about the update tool So on this particular setup, oh, the other thing I would say what I what I, this one has as well is like every Sega game, like if it's Mega Drive, I've been to the Sega Retro uh, website and made sure if it's a six button game, I've mapped it as six button. If it's a three button game, I'll map it as three button or just leave it on default. Default as three. All ones what are six button mapped as six button. Reason you can't just map them all as six is because there's some games by having a set to six button controller that you will not be able to control the game can't remember which ones but there's a list uh, of this sort of information uh, so yeah I've, I've done all that with the Sega controllers uh, Spectrum I've there's an there's an update I think what improved it even more uh, so I've mapped the things like the if it's a 48k model only then to 48k if it's 128k i try to map it to 128k or plus two etc look just all them little finer details um for me that's just trying to build something because it, as it's taken so many years just to try and make everything run as it should I, and it's like having a lovely retro museum in my home <laughs> so yeah so that's the uh epic Noya standard theme and then we will have if I go to here I'm just going to grab my keyboard back okay with the themes and changing themes on the Raspberry Pi 4 this is really important uh, for, for people uh, who, who are using this, this similar setup? If you got a huge, if you create a huge theme like this, even though I've optimized all the artworks at the background, um, the most of them are around 300 kilobytes. Uh, uh, if you, you, you it's going to slow down on the Raspberry Pi 4. It just not, it just cannot handle it. So my tip is, as you saw when I was scrolling through, it was absolutely fantastic. If I start scrolling through now, it's probably going to slow down to almost a halt. And you might even have to reboot through uh, PuTTY and through, through, through SSH. Uh, so what we what I do instead is every time I change theme, I restart the whole system. Now that seems oh no, I just restart the emulation station. No, I actually do a full shutdown. Now it seems like a really slow, annoying method. But to be honest how many times are you really going to want to muck about changing themes um, for me it's about just selecting the theme you want and enjoying the retro gaming experience go and finding a theme playing it and the fact that you got all these systems on a on a raspberry pi4 this tiny cheap little single bore computer um, little things like that for me i can live with uh, i still i still would rather have that and have it all set up like this um, you know and then muck about with PC drivers and everything like that and I just love that it's such a cheap little thing any you know most people can afford so you would go restart system 
it'll take a, probably a couple of minutes I don't know how long it takes to restart on this now I've got so many games on here uh, I would say a couple of minutes to restart I've got a long a long loading splash screens as well um, I think they're around about a minute each uh, so yeah we'll wait for this one to restart and uh, yeah when this is when this is booted back up again I'll show the cyberpunk theme I'm not a, a cyberpunk uh, game player I've never played the game I just love neon um, the effect of this sort of like really cool cyber neon retro with the purples and the like you know just a really nice dark sort of tones as well um, so yeah I want to basically show off that because I, I I really enjoy putting that all together the arts don't match the systems because there isn't you know it's, it's a different thing this is a it's not like doing what I had done with the other one so but yeah I'll show this one and there's a few others I've done a few other themes I've changed all the artworks for as well but this is this is the main one so this starts off on the uh, arcade I'll just go through slowly to see see the artworks. I think they're gorgeous artworks. Fantastic. I love this sort of this sort of look. as you can see after a reboot I mean I'm scrolling through and if I want to really click fast it's still going to scroll through quite nicely but I'll go a bit quicker on my tapping and you can see it's, I mean it's pretty amazing really you think the power that the it has on the on the Raspberry Pi 4 it's, it's, I think it's done it fantastic Yeah, so that's the cyberpunk theme, and oh, I've, I've changed the collections to see the little controller icon I made. Uh, I put together. I made them with like a neony sort of cool f effect to match the theme. I noticed someone else done that um, on my server, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that as well. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Basically, that's it. That's uh, that is the Retro Power, Power Final Edition and i uh, hope everyone enjoyed watching this video my next video will be showing off uh batasira on the pi5 what i managed to so far put together with uh, help from others as well um thanks for watching